Hey guys, I get a ton of Primavera P6 questions from people all over the world. So here's one from a recent members only webinar that we did at plantacademy.com. It's pretty relevant and I thought I'd share it with you. Check it out. Okay, so Lisa's come back. Going back to multiple flow paths issue, how do you quantify and articulate how near critical other activities are on the second path? You know, how do we quantify? I think, well, let's go look again. Let me pull that project up again so we can look. And pull up the old my flow path layout. Okay, so anytime we're quantifying near critical activities, we're gonna use total float to quantify them. Like even on this path to the first milestone, you can see that there's some activities with some float. These guys have four days of total float to get to this milestone. That's part of this tool is showing you um, the path to get to this milestone, it may not be the critical path of the project, but it is the path, the most efficient path to go from the start of the project to phase one completion. Okay, so anytime I'm I'm scrutinizing this stuff, you can see that the next float path activities have increasing total float. So that's an issue. Um, well, it's not an issue, but it's an indicator of how near critical they are. Okay, but again, when you're using multiple float paths, definitely look at that total float on these um, multiple, you know, float paths two, three, and four to to quantify. Because basically, what we're what we're looking at is these activities. Um, I wish I could draw a different picture for you. Uh, let, you know, I'm going to try this whiteboard thing. All right, how do I draw? Here we go. Okay, so this is my you know, rough assessment. And then we get to a milestone, okay? So that would be float path one right there. So float path two is often some activity like here that's linked, you know, through here and around. It's like, it's like, you got to get to the tunnel, right? You're, you're going from your house to the tunnel. You can take Main Street all the way, or you can, you know, if this section is blocked, you can go around by taking Second Avenue to Third Avenue and get back on the Main Street. That's kind of what those flow path twos and threes are. There are little offshoots that come around and come back on, okay? And sometimes they're down here, like sometimes they're down at the end, and then it drops down from here, links, and then heads back to the milestone like that. So, you know, this, this thing could have gone through 2nd and 3rd Avenue and back to Main Street, except that this path is maybe a little bit longer, like maybe just one day longer, something like that. Okay? Um, and, and maybe this path down here is one day longer as well. So that, that's what those second and third flow paths are. They're different, they're different paths. So that, you know, that this one could be flow path two and, uh, sorry, this one could be flow path one. That's a one. <laughs> and then flow path two might be another offshoot that comes down like this. You know, I know, I know this is not <laughs> pretty at all. But again, it's another like roundabout way to get there, taking some of the back streets and get back, back onto the main drag, okay? So you these, these paths are just a hair longer or something like that. So you just wanna be aware of them that if anything goes long in these, you know, if, if this activity here gets extended, then your new float path comes down here that looks like a real mess, but I think you're getting the idea. So that that's what's going on with those. So how do you quantify it? You you know you look at total float for sure, um, but a lot of the times it's that's the problem with that multiple float path tool is it doesn't draw it the way I just I have it drawn it here right. You can see the main you can see your main path and then there's these offshoots. It doesn't draw them 
uh, the way they should be drawn because you know, it just doesn't. But I would I would like to see it visually represented a little bit better. But that's kind of what uh, what's happening. So I hope that helps Lisa just quantify that a little bit. Hey, it's Michael again. I really hope you found this video helpful. And just a quick reminder to let you know that we have some amazing Primavera P6 courses at plantacademy.com. And we offer full support for those who take courses with us. So we're here to help you answer questions and let you succeed with Primavera P6.